What's up everybody, once again my name is Matt and welcome back to A Link to the Past. You might be wondering why I'm playing this again. Well, since so many of you guys seem to like my Skyward Sword glitch video, I figured I would do a similar one for A Link to the Past. So today, I'll be showing you a glitch you can use to beat the game in like under 5 minutes. Let me just copy and move my previous save file to slot 3 so I can use slot 1. Um, I think you do need at least 2 save files to perform this glitch, so thankfully I have one. Although it probably will get corrupted as a result, but doesn't really matter too much anyways. Alright, so... Uh, let's get started, shall we? The glitch we're going to be using is called Exploration Glitch, or EG for short. There are a few different variations of this glitch. There is Up Down EG, Save Quit EG, and I think the third version is just called EG. EG by far is the fastest and coolest method of this glitch, uh, because the record for beating the game with EG is like a minute and 26 seconds. Yeah, less than 90 seconds to go from start to finish, which is just absolutely insane to me. Now, sadly, EG requires a lot of very precise movement, like pixel-perfect stuff, which I'm not nearly skilled enough to pull off, so I'll be showing off the save-quit version of EG, which is uh, the easiest form of this glitch that can be performed on anything, including an actual Super Nintendo and the Virtual Console. The last version of this glitch is called Up Down EG. This can only be performed on an emulator, and I actually did that version of the glitch for an update video, just so I could have something cool playing in the background like as I was talking. Anyways, this glitch goes by fairly quickly, so I'll try and explain what I'm doing, and after I'm done, I'll try and explain how it works to the best of my ability, because to be honest, I don't really have a full understanding of why exactly this glitch works, but um, I think I have like enough understanding to give you guys like at least a noob's perspective on how it works. So right now, yeah, the game pretty much plays out exactly how you would expect it to. Um, once we get into Hyrule Castle, that's when we can start executing this glitch. At this point, it doesn't matter if we take damage, but uh, once we start the glitch, we will not be able to take damage, otherwise it will mess things up for us. So, what you want to do, head up these stairs, go to like the second floor, stand by this ledge, and uh, get ready to jump off. Once you're in the air, pause, save and quit, go back to the title screen. Now the glitch is sort of in effect because we saved when Link's state was in his jumping state. So now, some cool stuff can happen. But, we need to be careful because if we take damage at the wrong moment, it will completely mess this up. So yeah, just load back in, you'll be right where you picked up the sword from your uncle, and uh, now we're pretty much good to go, we just gotta get back into Hyrule Castle. If you do take damage, just like jump off the ledge again, save and quit, and uh, you can pick it up from there. But hopefully, that doesn't happen. In fact, you know what? Uh, let's try and get rid of one of these guards, just so it's a little bit safer to sneak into the castle from out here. Alright, we should be good, thank goodness. Now here's where the fun actually begins. So, uh, let's try and avoid these guys real quick, and we want to make our way into this leftmost room. And once we're in here, uh, wait for that guard to move down a little bit, then tap this wall to get his attention, and stand over here and hold left. As you're holding left and he hits you, he'll actually knock you into this wall. Now that we're here, we want to go up two screens, so that's one, and here is the second one. Now, immediately go right. You should actually see Link's hat pop out of the wall there on the bottom. Just go all the way to the right edge and then start going up. At this point, we just have to hold up and we'll pretty much be done with this glitch. It's really, really cool and really, really quick. And I guess due to how the room data in the game is programmed, while we are in this glitched state, if we walk in the right direction, we can just walk right into the room where you fight Ganon, and go from there to the Triforce room. So, you'll actually notice in a second here, uh, I should switch over. Yeah, there we go, and the Ganon music starts to play. So, uh, while we're walking forward, just uh, wave goodbye to Ganon. There's his glitched out room, and guess what? Ta-da! Here is the Triforce. So we did it, guys. We beat A Link to the Past already. Now, I'll let this play out and get to the credit sequence because, oddly enough, there are some interesting graphical glitches that take place in the credit sequence as a result of this glitch. It's kind of weird, but like, you guys saw how the textures in Ganon's room were all messed up, so I guess it kind of makes sense that other stuff would get screwed up too. 
So now you're probably wondering why this glitch works. Well, it's due to how the game decides where Link is in rooms with multiple layers and the different states that Link has when he's either on the upper layer, the lower layer, or jumping between them. So when Link jumps down from one layer to another, he enters this special state which gives him some interesting properties, like for instance, he can't be hurt. And of course, like this is stored in the game's memory, so once you land, the game is supposed to return you to normal, but if you save and quit, for some reason the game doesn't actually reset that value, and you end up like keeping that jumping state even upon like reloading into your save file, and uh, you're on the ground. So this allows you to do some really weird stuff, like for instance, when we got hit by that guard the first time, you noticed that um, we didn't take any damage until we got hit the second time. And that's because when you get hurt while you're jumping, it actually starts the hurt state for Link. And um, when you're in the hurt state, during that like short animation of you taking damage the first time you get hit, you actually don't take damage. But the hurt state cancels out the jumping state. And when that happens, the game tries to correct the previous like jump state glitch and just assumes that because you were previously jumping, uh, you should be on the lower floor. And since like we were in a room where there's no floor directly below us, and we were holding left, the game appears to let us walk into the wall, but in reality, we actually just like dip down under the map entirely. And from there, it's just about hitting the proper loading zones. And yeah, check this out. There's like a weird ghosting effect on the sanctuary for some reason. Not sure why that is, because like it's the only part in the entire credit sequence that has that weird ghosting effect. There are other like sprite glitches too. Like for instance, um, it's not supposed to be raining at all right now. But uh, obviously, yeah, there's that weird like rain effect applied to the entire overworld. And as a result, like some of the sprites look darker than they're supposed to, while other sprites have like the normal sunny day look to them. And I think that's because like, you know, it's raining outside of Link's house when you start the game and we never actually hit the trigger to stop that. So it just sort of rains all over the place, except for in like certain areas like this, where I guess because we're on the mountain, uh, the weather effects just sort of cancel out. I actually have no idea, and it's one of those things that, like, if I understood every nuance about how this game works, I probably could give you, like, an educated explanation, but I really don't. And it's weird, too, because some areas just don't have the problem at all. Like, for instance, Zora's River. Like, it plays out perfectly normal. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. And then, of course, it just goes right back to raining again, so, yeah, kind of weird. Also, notice how, like, the rain isn't even animated whatsoever. It's just sort of stuck on top one static image. Oddly enough, that will be animated later on, like, once we get to the developer credits, just not animated in the correct way. You'll see what I mean once we get there. And, um, what's funny is the rain sound effect, right? Like, that'll just play through the entirety of all of the credits, no matter what. So get used to that annoying rain sound, because it's going to be sticking around for a long, long time. Don't you worry. It's just weird to see like all these oddities that happen because of a glitch that you would think wouldn't even cause that. But um, it does have a lot of side effects, which is kind of cool, I think. I don't know. I like seeing what glitches do to games, because obviously, the game isn't like doing something it expected to ever be doing, so it's fun to just like sit back and watch how the game just freaks out as a result of this glitch. And uh, to be honest, I've been enjoying making these glitch videos, so I might actually do more if you guys like them. So let me know in the comments down below. And um, if there's any like specific glitch that you would like to see me make a video on, definitely let me know. I do know of a lot of like Zelda themed glitches from watching various different speedruns, like. I watched a lot of speedruns for Ocarina of Time, Wind Waker, Link to the Past obviously, uh, A Link Between Worlds, and uh, a couple for like Skyward Sword and Twilight Princess, not a whole lot though. My favorite glitches are the ones that do allow you to skip like large portions of the game, like the one in A Link to the Past and Skyward Sword that I did videos on already. I don't think um, like Twilight Princess or Wind Waker have any like huge skips like that. There is the back in time bug in Twilight Princess. That's like the same glitch that we used in Skyward Sword. Although I don't think you can do anything like go directly from the beginning of the game to the end of the game using that glitch in Twilight Princess. Uh, Ocarina of Time has some crazy glitches, but uh, they're really hard to pull off. Anyways, though, 
We'll talk about those glitches some other time, I'm sure. For now, though, the Master Sword sleeps again forever, and here is the actual developer credit. So, this actually gets a little bit creepy, right? So, you see the Triforce in the background, whatever, not a huge deal, but soon enough, uh, yeah, you get like this weird blood rain that sort of like fades in on the background. It's kind of creepy, and also the rain is scrolling from, you know, <laughs> right to left, and also it changes color. That's obviously not how the rain is supposed to work, but that's how it works in this version of the credits. Anyways, though, that's really all I wanted to show off, so I think I'm going to end the video off here. If you guys enjoyed this part, a like rating would be greatly appreciated. If you want to see more, consider subscribing. But once again, guys, my name is Matt. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.